Today, we are just beginning to see what is called virtual personal assistance. Siri was one of the first that not only assists you, but has intelligence behind it. Siri has what's called artificial intelligence, using word recognition, natural language, and also understanding the intent and acting on the intent. So we often call Siri a do engine, but what about a dialogue? What about a conversation? You can't do that today. We are now bringing to the market new companies that will be able to do dialogue as well. But we only start startups that have three ingredients. One, a great market opportunity, a large market. Two, a disruptive technology. And three, a great team. We've started maybe 50 ventures, 60 ventures over the last 17 years. Four have gone IPO. Uh, the market value of all of them is about 20, 25 billion dollars. There are major market disruptions that are happening in this world, more than I've ever seen. One, the world of artificial intelligence is now coming to, to clarity, virtual personal assistance. Two, robotics. I don't mean robots in factories. I mean robots that are flexible, agile, and can even work next to individuals. So yes, they can be in factories or they can be in your home. Three, health and medical uh, drug discovery is only just beginning with DNA research and the like. So for example, in medical, SRI is now putting together a company that will effectively discover cancer cells in your bloodstream and allow you to diagnose and find them even without having known where in your body that might be. This is no better time for technology than I've ever seen. We all wish we had started Google. Search was an incredibly, almost obvious technology. But what made Google great was not the ability only, not only the ability to do search, but also the ability to eventually, and they didn't know it first, understand what the market opportunity was that, that you could advertise as associated to the search query. But I think the do engine will be just as important as the search engine. The engine that allows you to do things for you, not just search things for you. And Google now is also trying to do that as well. Of course, Siri and Apple are now doing it. You are going to see a battle of giants attempting to do that in the future. We intend to participate in that battle. So I heard a lot of you talking about uh, biology and some of the things that are changing. So here's my question. When are we going to see the death of death? First of all, physically, we have cells in our bodies. Those cells are naturally programmed to die over 60, 80, 90 years or so. That will change too. That, that will change because technology is emerging that will allow you to grow organs, replace organs, to get, stop sickness, and so on. So first is, the average lifetime will be 100, 150 years or more because of that kind of innovation. Now there's another meaning to the death of death, the artificial intelligence meaning, which is, if, so, if I can teach a computing system about me, and have it understand how I think, and it thinks like I think. Will I still be alive at that point? Or will the computing system only be a poor copy of me? This is a question that obviously people like Ray Kurzweil and others have been asking, and thinking of that as immortality. 